Rabosa, if you recall, we almost got to the end of page Samach Zayin in the al Habi Urim. And I got stuck. And I looked it over again. And I got stuck again. <laughs> so I cannot report any great progress. But let's just go over it very quickly. And maybe, gentlemen, you'll be able to enlighten me. Because the way he presents it, he, like it's so simple to him. He doesn't blink, but I don't, I don't get it. I don't have it. The problem is the following. That Rashi and many, many Rishonim understand that the halacha, the status of Tsaras Erva is not the same as the status of the Erva herself. So you have two women fell for Yibam to Shimon. One is a sister to Shimon's wife. That's Achos Ishta. And the other is a Tsara, another wife of Ruvain, the late Ruvain. There's no reason why the tsara should be classified as an erva. There's no such thing as contagious erva that just because she was married together with the achos ishto to Ruven, the late brother, therefore she became achos ishto. That doesn't make any sense. But rather the erva is the old erva of Ashes Ach. And the Torah is just saying that the tsara's erva does not fall for Yibam and the mitzvah of Yibam doesn't apply. That tour will automatically resuscitate, so to speak, the old Iser Erev of Eishas Ach, because there's no mitzvah of Yibum to pater it up. If that be the case, then we don't understand Rami Bar Chama's objection to Rava. Rava was the one who said that you can't be machmir in a case of an Erev the Makom Mitzvah. More than Shalom Makam. I mean, if, if, if the Kalachomer of Rav is very clear, if in the situation of a mitzvah, the Torah says it's us or because of error, but then how much more so in the case of Shalom Makam mitzvah? So you can't be more Machmir in Makam mitzvah than in Shalom Makam mitzvah. So comes along Rabbi Bar Chama, and he quotes the Allah of Tzaras Erva, who's only Asura with Makom Mitzvah. Yeah, but that, but that's not an Erva. We're not talking about Tzaras Erva as an Erva. We're talking about Tzaras Erva because she's Ashes Ach, and that doesn't contradict Rav. Hello, he says Af Mitzaralo is Chadish Din Erva with Makom Mitzvah. Even in the case of Mitzvah's Erva, we're not coming up with a brand new category of Erva. Because of the Yashin. So again, I would, I would look for the Sefer. He quotes the Paras Yosef. I, I have no clue how to get a hold of it. Shalishi Tosom, according to Rashi and the other Rishonim, Yesh Lefari Sha'af, Romi Bar Chama, Lois Kavig Lomar. Romi Bar Chama's objection to Rav was not that Iser Achos Isha will apply here in the case of a Tsar's Erevo. Elahiksha, what was his objection? Shema Lo Nesra Achos Isha Kla. That maybe there's no Erev at all of Achos Isha. The Kol Dina Erva Ba, who back Niftar Mi Yibu, the status of an Erva is only relevant to Pater up from Yibu. And once you Pater up from Yibu, Mimela, you put her back into the category of Eshesach, but there is no other Erva. And therefore, Rabbi Bar Chama objects to Rabbi because it's quite possible that we, paradoxically the, 
the situation of Achos Isha is going to be more chomor in the case of Ashes Ah, not because of the Erev of Ashes Ah. I'm sorry, I'm starting in. Paradoxically, the, the Erev of Achos Ishto will be more chomor b'makom mitzvah, b'makom yibu, than it would be shalom b'makom yibu. Shalom b'makom yibu, go ahead, marry two sisters. The Torah never prohibited. The Torah only told us that if the woman who falls for Yibam is the wife of your, is the sister of your wife, then there's no Yibam. And if there's no Yibam, then she falls back into the category of Ashes Ah. Because there's no Mitzvah Yibam to remove the Arab of Ashes Ah. But Shalom about Mitzvah, when there's no Arab of Ashes Ah, there's no Arab of Achos Isha as well. Well, let's see it inside. Again, I always uh, am forced to go back to the, you know, to the Lashon Hashas. Amalei Rami Bar Chamalu Rav. I want Ches Hamid Beis on the third line down from the top. And Rav Barachama is objecting to, objecting to Rav because Rav derived from a Leha, the Isid Tzara. Ema, Erva Gufe. Perhaps I need a Leha to exclude the Erva. And to exclude the Erva, the Makal Mitzvah of Yibun, and Achos Isha, is excluded from Yibo. I will shalom him, Uncle Mitzvah Tishtere. And therefore, maybe the word Olel is coming to tell us that Olel, meaning when there is a Mitzvah Yibo, then and only then is there an Iser Vachos Isha. But now we're saying not an Iser Vachos Isha because of Vachos Isha. Because Haraya Shalom Makam Mitzvah, according to this logic of Rabbi Bar Chava, there is no Erev of Achos Isha. But rather, Achos Isha as a p'tur in the midst of Yibo, which the Mela puts her back into the category of Ashes Ach. So, Mela, what happens now is that this objection that we raised over here. That according to Rashi, and other Rishonim will agree with Rashi, Erva is not, Saras Erva is not an Easter of an Erva, but rather it's a Ptur Yibu. And the male, she falls back into the original Erva status of Ashes Ah. And therefore, we were wondering what is Rabbi Barakhama proving from the case of Tsara? And the answer is that Rabbi Barakhama is only trying to argue against Rava with regard to the Pasuk Olel and offer an alternative interpretation of Olel according to which the Torah be matir achos isha shalom v'wakam mitzvah. And it has nothing to do with Tsaris Erva. He's only quoting Tsaris Erva because Rava had derived from Olel Tsaris Erva and uh, Rabbi Barakham is arguing, he's counter-arguing against Rabbi, I need Olela, not for Tzar Sever, but for Erva Gufe to teach me that in the case of Yibum, there's an Erva called Achos Isha, but not Midin Achos Isha, but rather Midin Ach, um, Ach. However, Shalom Emoka Mitzvah, all you have is Achos Ishto, you don't have Ashes of him, and there would be no Easter error. Okay, now if that's the chat in Rabbi Barchama, so how do we understand Rabbi's counter argument against Rabbi Barchama? Amale, Alecha Amakra, Bechayel, Kol Shebechayel. Etc. Okay. 
The Haitian low Rava, you have it, it's about uh, eight lines before the end of the page. The Kalvachomer, Im Yeshlachos Isha, Din Erva, Le Inyan Ptur Yibum, Kolshkin Shi Yeshla Din Erva, Le Inyan Iser Kares. I don't get it. What does this mean? Rami Barakhan just finished saying that there is no din erva to Achos Isha. There's only a Ptur Yibo. Oh, I just, it just don't know. Wow. You see, sometimes when you learn something that is something that's after, you get a Horus Ponim. Uh, I'll tell you what Rabbi Barakhan why is she parted from Yibun? That's what Rob is asking. All your love, this is very good, Rami Barakhan. But you're right. We're going to put her back to the status of Aishas Akhul. But why? If an Achos Isha is not an Arab, so why shouldn't the Mitzvah of Yibun apply? I mean, you'll tell me Achos uh, Aishas Akhul. But in every case of Yibun, the Torah is not of Aishas Akhul for the sake of the Mitzvah of Yibun. Why not in this case also? So what if it's Achos Isha? The only possible justification for Tur Yibu in the case of Achos Isha is because Achos Isha is an Erva unto ourselves. I didn't understand this. Yesterday I was just, and today also, I was racking my brain. Memela, Eim Lechalik, the Isura, Bein Mako Mitzvah, Bein Shalom Mako Okay. So let's go back to the Gemara again. The lav kalachomer who v'mako mitzvah sire yishlo v'mako mitzvah shariyim. If the Torah was not willing to be matir, says Rama, the erva of achos ishto for the sake of the great mitzvah of yibum, then certainly if there's no mitzvah of yibum, it goes without saying that there's no matir on the iser erva. There's no hava needed to be matir the iser erva. So I don't need the pasuk olel. For the erva gufa, amale. So Rami Bar responds, "Sara tochia." If a makom mitzvah sira, shelo be makom mitzvah sharia. Tochiach lo Rami Bar Chama mitzara. She ain't ze kal v'chomer. Sharei matzinu mitzara. She yesh la din erva le inyan p'tur yibo. Velo le din karis. So I'll tell you what I think he's saying over here. You tell me what you think he's saying. He's saying that there could be a host of different variables or reasons why the Torah says there's no Yimam in this case. It doesn't have to be because of Erva. Rabbi was yelling and screaming, why is Achot Sichta excluded from the midst of Yimam? What do you have against her? You can't tell me because it's Achot Sichta. Because that's always evil. You're going to have to say because these are Erev Machos Isha. Then, the Torah has its own mindset, its own way of thinking, its own mechanism and variables as to why there will be a mitzvah of evil, why there won't be a mitzvah of evil. Do I know why a Tzaras Erev does not fall for evil? You can't tell me Erev. If it wasn't Shibimok of Yibum, there would be no Easter Arab in the case of Saras Yibum. I'm allowed to marry this woman who was married to so and so, and at the same time, he was married to my wife's sister. There's no problem with that. So, why did the Torah exclude Saras Arab from Yibum? You can't tell me it's because of Arab. Apparently, there are a host of different reasons. You know, we can't, we can't go into the mindset of the Almighty and figure out why he obligates me, uh, Yibum, why he doesn't obligate me. Why should it source Erebo be exempt from Yiva? It's not because of Erebo. So if the Torah decided that Saras Erebo doesn't fall for Yiva, then the Torah decided that Achosishna doesn't fall for Yiva, but not because of the Erebo. So I need a law to establish the Erebo. Okay, let me just make sure I got that right. I 
think that's right. I hope that's right. So what is Rabbi answer to, to Rami Barachama? Amalei Alecha Omar Kro. What's the Alecha Omar Kro here? Bichayel. Right, it says, by Achos Isha Legalo Servas Alev Bichayel. Kol She Bichayel. She's Asura. Bain B'Mokom Isha Bain. Below B'Mokom. And the Gemara is going to object because we need Bechayel for something else. Lema'ute le'achar misa. Ahimei v'yishal achosa, nafkali. Okay, back and forth. That's what he says over here at the end of this paragraph. Tore e'ena neseres b'yisra erva atma. Tore's erva is not an erva. V'yena kore's ba el mishumeshes ach, she'chosa ba v'meila. That the reason why she's an erva is only because of Eshes Okay. Now this leads us to page Samaches. Now the Gemara, once again, on Davches Samad Beis, has a drosha. If I'm not mistaken, it's Rebbe. Where is it? Um, Rebbe Omer. Second. Rebbe is going to have a different derivation to exclude Saras Erva from the fact that the Torah says, Where is that? Uh, Rabbi Kapustin, could you just point it out to me because it's just the same time? What? Uh, it's about 18, 19, 18 lines up from the bottom? Okay. Yeah. But do you think, yeah, I, know, I understand. I also found that. But, oh, but okay. Gufa indicates that it was uh, back on, on Chesom and Ali. I wanted to just go back to Chesom and Ali. Where is it? Um, All right, I'm so going to toast those. Three lines of program. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Toshma. Very good. Toshma. So we're on Daf Chesam and Aleph, approximately, what was she say, 15 lines up from the top, from the bottom, excuse me. Ready, Omer. So now we're going to derive the tour of Arias in Yibu. So it says, Vilakach, Vilak Ulekacha, Ibem Vibmach. Less are the sorrows, there are riots. So this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the following words, if you can point this out. It should be on Chesam and Faith. I'm looking for the words of Kol Hecha de Ika Treili Kucha. Can you point those words out to me? Yeah. Well, oh, there it is. I think I found it. It's about 10 lines up from the bottom of the Amud. More than 10. Um,
that in a second ago. Now I lost it again. Is there an easy way of pointing that out? I mean, the first word of the line is my, if that helps anybody. About 12 lines up from the bottom of Chesam and Beis. Means he could marry one of two wives. He has a choice which one he wants to be Miyabim. Then the Torah says that you're allowed to be Miyabim. But the E low, if he doesn't have a choice, because one of them is an erva, then Chavayuasi. Cannot marry neither the Ervin nor Hatsar, because you always have to have a situation of Iboy Nasiv Hai, Iboy Nasiv Hai. Okay. Now, in the second paragraph, Hikshu Atos. So you'll see a tosis on towards the top of Chesam and Beis, the second tosis of mine. And we're going to fast forward to the Tomar, which is about three lines up before the end of the tosis. The Dilma Osa Kral of Meimar, Matsara, Beloha Erva. In other words, how does Rebbe know that Melachah means that if he can't marry both of them, then they're both Asuros? Maybe the Torah is just saying that Melachah means you can only marry the Tzara and not the Erva. The Tosas answers, I think that Madi Omar is Rava, if I remember correctly. So Rava was the one who said that, you know, and therefore Rava says there was never a Hamamina that the midst of Yibo would trump an Erva, meaning a Chiv Karts, because that's outside of the purview of Essay Dokalosis. So therefore, according to Rava, it's impossible to say that Velokha is telling you to marry the Tzara and Asa's the Erva, because Rava knows from Svara that you're not allowed to be Makai the Mitzvah of Yibum in the case of an Erva, because the Mitzvah of Yibum is not powerful enough to override an Essen. I'm sorry, to override a Losa Shishbo Karas. The Hiksha Atosis Burnish doesn't mean nothing. Anyway, Lama Tolu es Teirutsum Dafkalaman, the Omer Ervalo Tricha Kra, that sheet of Rava because Enes Edochalos and Shishma Karens, Alo Afig Nomar Shehi Tricha Kra, the Lule Akrov, not for the Posco, and Nitre Isa Karish of the name Mitzvah Yibu, and Es Edochalos and Shishma Karens, in Komakom. The mikra should boom in the bera kosu, the hainu she yeshla sora no sefes, she ain't a erva. Ain't so crook, they lesser lois a erva. Why? Sorry, efshal kaimish neem, gamis a love, the gamis a essen. You follow? He's arguing very beautifully that in the case of a tsaras erva, no one would question. That ain't essay dochalosa. Why? Because it's Efshel Kaim Shneem. He can have his cake and eat it. He can fulfill the mitzvah without violating the law. Why? He can marry the tzar. And therefore, why? Second. So let me get the cheshbon now. So therefore, 
Hasta aquí. Wait a minute, I, I lost the, the mathematics. Let me see. Oh, oh, okay. He's, he's leaving it as a question. Why did Tosis have to invoke the sheet of Rava? In this case, Kuliavolo Pligi, that you don't need a puzzle to answer the Arab, because the Arab is Asura Mimela, and there's no essay to Velosa said because it's actually Kanshne. This paragraph ends in a question, am I right? Yeah, this, this paragraph ends in a question. Got to put a question mark at the end. With Hiduche Rabbi Nachum, Pasav Liyashev, Shalashitas Atosvis, Liel, Af Eter Eches Ach Yesodo Humidin Dechir, yeah, but what about the air of of of, of Oh, okay, so that I don't know how he knows that. That's Ruach HaKodesh. But he's saying that as a general rule, every case of, of Yibum requires a Dechir, and you're overriding a, a, a Karetz, and he's a Karetz. So therefore, in a case of a, of a Tzaras Erva, it's not actually kind of shnayim, because no matter how you slice the cake, you're going to be violating the Yisra Erva. In the, in the Tzaras Erva, she's achos, I mean, sorry, she's Eishas Achim. Because Tosin Shita is that Yibam only always works midin the Chia, and you're violating the Yisra Eishas Ah. So if that be the case, this is not called Efshel Kaim Shneim. Even though, again, if he chooses to have Yibam with the Tzoras erva, he only violates one erva, Vashas Ach, whereas if he would be Miyabe Machos Ishto, he's violating two arayas. But Rab Nochem assumes, which I'm not sure exactly where he knows that from, Mali Yisr Echot. I mean, that, that reminds me of the Sugiv Hol Vishtere Ishtere. And we had a long discussion there in the context of that Sugya. What was the language of the Gemara? Do you remember of it? Uh, Anyway, we're not more machmer because you add another isu. The Mela says, Rav Nachum told us had no choice but to answer his question by invoking the sheet of Rava that ain't as a dochalosa sheesh bo karitz. And therefore, Can justify Rebbe that Rebbe is going to derive from this possible that there's no possibility of Yibu with the Tsaras Erva, but we don't need a Pusk for the Erva because, because ain't essay Dokalosa Shish Bokar. Now there's a paragraph here. Minayin le Rebbe Ares Bitsaras Erva. Do you see that paragraph on the bottom of the towards the end of Samachis? Now Hikshuat Tosus, for the life of me, I don't know why they don't tell you exactly where it is. You know, you have to in Cain, Af Yevama Asura Bi Isar Essay, Shaniba La Lanchi Holetsa Tiftar Sarasa, Re Aina Yacholuliyab. In. Oh, here it is. I found it. I'm sorry. So let's open up to Dav Chesam and Beis, and we'll come back here to Yalku and Abiram in just a second. And 
we're looking at Tosus Diri Maskal call. Yeah? Yes. Right? So uh, Rebbe derived from this puzzle that you have to be able to choose your marriage partner between the two Yuvamos. Right, let's say, um, what, what case can I give? Ruvain, the late Ruvain, was married to two women, and one of them was an Almod, right? She had been married previously. The other one was not an Almod. And now, Ruvain's a Cohen and Shimon, the surviving brother's a Cohen. Let, let's say I mentioned Almona, that's a Cohen God. So let's say Bruce. Shimon is a Cohen God. Now, vis a vis, let's give her a name, we'll call her Leah. There's an Easter essay. Of course, the Torah says, Who Isha Bipsuleo Yika. But let's say she was a Mu'ula, not an Almona. And now, Ruven, I'm sorry, Shimon has no choice but to marry Rocha, not Leah. Well, what else? What, what, do we have any other cases that offhand? Um, Mitzri? Oh, I, I don't remember offhand. We'll, we'll come up with other cases. But anyway, that's, that's Tosus Kasha. To Lekele Meimah di boy hai nasi, di boy hai nasi. But let me just see for a second if by chance he quotes a case. I'm just curious as to what the case might be. Ah, Taki gives my case. How do you like that? He goes, Kohen Gadol, the Ika Ale Chiv essay, Lisa Bisula, can it say, the Hu Isha Bisula Ika, the Haisa Ashes Achiv, the High Kohen Gadol, right? So the Kohen Gadol's brother died, and that brother who died left a wife without children who falls in front of the Kohen Gadol for Yibo. lav Oh, he's talking about a lot. Okay, so I don't know. It's probably there are details here that I'm not ready to right now to get distracted, because I think we can understand the Tosmus without knowing all these nitty-gritty details. But basically, we're talking about a basula, a baula lekohen god, which is an Iser S. Lushitas Rebbe, the call she'eno yochel lekayim velokcha v'yachas me'ena tre arei hu asa b'shteya. Okay, so that would be tzoras Easter essay. We don't have a category of Taurus Easter essay, but it should come out that we do appoint a Rebbe because he doesn't have the option of marrying both of them. The Odik shall the Rebbe Shane Dorish Litzor al Tsaras Erva is Aimon Makar Lakaris with Tsaras Erva. The old tema, the hashta, means by the hashta, the hashta, leka tsaras erva kar, bitsaras erva karis. He says here, to who yolif mi velakha, to call hechadika tre lakuchen, i boy nasif hai, i boy nasif hai. 
והיינו דיינו איסר ערבו דאיקו קורז Now this is a complicated process. I'm just going to give it one more shot. The hashta leka bitsaras erva kuris yolif mivalakha hecha di ika treu The Eno Isa Erva Eco Chorus Boy Halitza Mohai be Esse Old Hicks, the Rebbe Sheeno Dorish Litzor, Altsoros Erva, right? Because Rebbe substitutes the, the you know, Rebbe's Alfus of Altsoros Erva is the Lakha that he has to have Trey Lukuku. Elon of Makar, the Kares, Altsoros Erva. The Imachain in Bokores Yeshla Liskayim Bechalitza Mochaivi Lavi Essex is Rabu Lechalitza. Where did he see the two doses? While looking at the doses. You know what he's asking. I mean, again, I, I can't give you all the nitty gritty details, but the general uh, highlight of this Kasha Tosus, which I don't exactly know how to fit into the language of this right now, but I guess it fits into the words Vim Kenti Boy Chalitza, is that Rebbe doesn't have the possible Litzor to teach me that Taurus Erev is an Erev, and therefore Rebbe derives the p'tur of Yibum of Tsaris Ereva from the Lakha, meaning they has to have Trey Lukuchen. Now, if Tsaris Ereva is not included under an Isakare, then we should require Chalitza, because the principle is that only in a Chiv Kares is there no requirement of chalitza, i.e. there's no zika. But if there's only a lie, and how much more so if there's only an essay, we require chalitza. If there's no yibam, there's no chalitza. If the reason why there's no yibam is because the chalitza increases, below the chalitza of the essay.
So again, you know, we, you know, we have a, a very important question in general, you know, Yudias Mesechti Fomus, and that is, what's the status of a Taurus Erva? Is she an Erva or is she not an Erva? That according to one school of thought of Ridarshan from Litzvar, the conclusion is that she's an Erva, but according to Rebbe, who doesn't have the limit of Litzvar, she's not an Erva. Hence, Tosin's cash is according to Rebbe, we should require Chalitza in the case of a Tsarist Erva. Now he says, Vitirtsu. Yeshlomer, let's see if we can find it in Tosis. The Chayve essay, this Rabu Lechalitza, this Buzika, Das, Havu Bechal Vlakcha. Wow. This is Lumbush. He's saying that Vlakcha doesn't refer to can he be Miyabim and consummate the evil, but Vlakcha means is there a Zikas evil? Now, the halacha that you need chalitza in cases below a chiv kares, meaning lavim or esen, that's derived from v'lakcha. And what is v'lakcha teaching me? That if there is Let's say he calls it a ktsas zika, then she needs chalitza. Im kein soras erva. What, what was the whole logic of Rebbe? Rebbe was saying that Sarat Erva is excluded because there's no Vlakha. Well, if that be the case, then if there's no Vlakha, then she doesn't require Chalitza because the possible Vlakha is the source from which we derive the Chiv Chalitza. You know, is going around and around in a circle. Etirtu, let's see how he summarizes this. Chayve Esen, Sheesh Bam Zika with Chalitza, right? That's the Ktsas Zika. Rain Bechal Vlakha. Why? Because the Zika is In other words, if you're going to say that Saras Erva requires Chalitza, which is the Havmin of Tosis in, Re in Rebbe. So then it means that she is included in Vlakcha and she has a Mitzah Zika. So if she's included in Vlakcha, then why not be the kind of Mitzah Yibam? Maybe the whole reason why there's no Yibam, according to Rebbe in Achos in Saras Erva, is because. There's no Vlakha because you need, you know, that the option of being Makayim both with both, you know, the choice options. And there is no choice option. So she's not included in Vlakha. If she's not included in Vlakha, then by definition she doesn't require Khalitza. Because the whole business of requiring Khalitza is based on Vlakha, not Vlakha in the sense that he will consummate evil. Of Lakha because it's a mix of Zika And that itself generates a few Chalitza. 
But we're now excluding, according to Rebbe, Saras Erva, based on the possible Lakha, meaning that she's outside of the Lakha, because Lakha requires possibility of marrying both. So if she's outside of the Lakha, then clearly there's no Zika and requirement of Khalid. That's what we have. Okay, so let's let's make a note here, and now we go back to Davtes. So we are now towards the bottom of Daf Tes Omer Aleph. And we're up to Omale Levi Lareb. See, it's about 10 lines up from the bottom. Well, the magic number in our Mishnah of Arayos, Apochos Es Tsaroseam, is 15. And that's the name of the paragraph. Omale Levi Lareb. My area chamesh is right. Listen, shesh is right. Well, Levi wants to add a sixteenth category of erev that patas hatzorah. We don't know what it is yet, but we'll get to that very momentarily. Amalisa Rebbe responds to Levi in the Duma Lisha Elo Mark Lekod Kado. It's only because I learned that the feet of a Litvak that I can appreciate. That kind of you have no brain in your head. I already was in a later generation, so he was mellowed out. But uh, five years before me, already the guys couldn't eat breakfast and hold down their breakfast. That's how nervous they were. Imagine if your Rebbe says to you publicly in front of 100 students, you have no brain in your head. You know what I'm saying? That's not very comfortable. Yeah. I never heard that that from me. I don't think anybody. There were other things. Yeah. I remember when I was sitting on the right side of Rav Salvation again. My right was another young man, the most idle guy you'd ever want to meet. He's a Rav today in Munson. And in front of him, there was another guy who was mamish next to the Rav's knees. And the Rav asked a question, and the fellow to the Rav's left yelled out an answer. The Rav said, who said such a thing? Meaning, you know, how stupid. So the guy who actually said it moves over, points to the guy, but he said it. <laughs> Now Rebbe is going to analyze the proposition of Levi and show why it's not a good question. My daitoch, what woman, what category do you want to add to the 15 in our Mishnah? Imo anusas oviv. Now we have in our Mishnah, Imo. But now we want to add, or Levi at least wanted to add, a different permutation of Imo, and that's Anusas Oviv. She should also be included as a 16th category that Patas Apat So I'm just going to read to you the Masifta. He works it out with names. Kigon. Yaakov and Nosa es Rochel. Okay, Yaakov marries Rochel. The Yodolo es Shimon. So Shimon is the son of the marriage relationship between Rochel and Yaakov. The Onas Yaakov es Leo. Okay, so whereas Rachel was a marriage relationship, but the relationship with Leah 
was outside of the framework of marriage. The Yoldolo es Ruven. So Leah, together with Yaakov, in this rape situation, she mothered Shimon. She, I'm sorry, she mothered Reuven. So we now have Shimon and Reuven are brothers from the same father. Now what happens? Nasa Shimon es Leah. Now let's just figure out why Shimon is allowed to marry Leah. Leah was not married to his father, Yaakov. So I don't know what to do. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're allowed to marry Anusas Aviv. I, I hold myself right now responsible for that. And Shimon, in addition to marrying Leah, he married another woman. So Shimon is married to two wives. One of them is Leah, that's Anusas Aviv, and the other is, we'll call us Sarah. Shimon below Zera, the Nuflu Nashab with Ne Ruvain Liyibu, because Ruvain and Shimon are brothers by the our paternal brothers. Now, who are these two women that Shimon is married to? Shimon is married to both Leah, who's the mother of Ruvain, and to Sarah. Are Leah? Shehi imo shel hayavam ruvain p'tur mi chalitza miibum u'poteres gam in sarat saros. In kain kashalach, the Rebbe is reading Levi's mind, and he's saying you're bothered. Madula huva af mikrit zebim mishn. So the, you know, the issue that crosses my mind is, once you have emo, why do you need? A different kind of emo, which is emo of Anusas Aviv. At the end of the day, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that Leah is the mother of Reuven. And when Leah now being married to Shimon, Reuven's brother mm -hmm. falls for Yibum to Reuven, then it's his own mother that's fall, that's falling for Yibum with the death of Shimon. Let's see why Rebbe comes so down, you know, harsh on Levi. Emo Anusas Aviv Plukta de Rabbi Yehuda Rabbanon. In other words, our Mishnah is trying to avoid machlokis, and every one of the fifteen categories enumerated in our Mishnah of Arayos are universally, unanimously accepted, but not. Anusas Aviv. So I told you before, and I don't think I was misleading you, that you're allowed to marry Anusas Aviv. But in truth, what Rebbe is pointing out is that is an issue that divides Rabbi Yehuda and the Rabbanu. Achavim hold you allowed to marry Anusas Aviv. And Rabbi Yehuda says, oh, just like you can't marry the wife of your father, you cannot marry the Anusa of your father. And this is Sugya later on in Meset Divon. Now, according to Rabbi Yehuda, the whole Metzius of this category, we'll call it Sara the Imo Anusas Aviv, is impossible. Why? Because Shimon. The, the brother that eventually died, would not be allowed to marry Leah because she is Anusas Ovid. One second. Now, I'm just wondering, it seems that the Gemara is assuming that in all the 15 cases in our Mishnah, all the marriages were Kidasu Kiddin. No one violated. Hmm. 
since it comes out that according to Rabbi Yehuda, there's no possibility of this, you know, uh, of engineering this kind of a, of a setup, is therefore bepluk to lokom mayri. The Mishnah is not going to mention a case which is dependent upon two opinions, and in this particular case would be against Rabbi Yehuda. Now, what we have to do now is, is, is study all the cases and see, is it really true that the plug to low kamayr? So Gemara says, Velo, Bare Iser Mitzvah, the Iser Kedusha, the Pligi Rabbi Akiva Rabbonan Uktani. So we have a mission later on in the Chav. Called Choletes vi Eno Misia Bemis. And it applies to both an Easter mitzvah and an Easter Kedusha. So, what is the case of an Easter Kedusha? And who argues about it? Going to be Machlokus Shin Chachomim and Rabbi Akiv. And we're talking about. Shneos Laranis, which are Arayos de Rabona. Now he tells you to look at a diagram, but you know what? Let's let's leave the diagrams for tomorrow. We don't have that much time. Let's just see if we get the flow of the Gemara. So we now have a case of an Erva de Rabbanon, which is called Shneas Larayos. He, he here gives an example of a grandma who goes, your mother's mother, it's really fascinating when you think about it, is only a, an Isa de Rabbanon. So if she, your grandmother, falls for Yibam together with a tzara, so the halacha is choletes below misyabemis. That's called an Easter mitzvah. Okay, and again, there's a whole diagram which we will see tomorrow. Now, what's Iser Kedusha, Noshim Hasuros Alayovam, the Iser Lavo essay, Kigon Shenoflo, the fun of Mamzeres, or Messina, Hare Hain Choletes, Velomis Yabmos, Choltos Velomis Yabmos, the Hain Krios, Iser Kedusha. So the Iser Mitzvah, that fits into the category of Shneos Larayas, that are only prohibited in Midrabon. And the Iser Kedusha, that's a reference to Mamzeres or Nesina, which is an Iser Lav or an Iser Esa. That's called Iser Kedusha Choltos Lomitz Yavos. Now, on a Doraisa level, Right, for sure, in the case of Shneos, there's a heter yibum. And even in the case of Isure Kedusha on the Raisa level, we would apply the principle of Esse Dochelosa, and there'd be a heter yibum. That's all on the Raisa level. However, if we're operating with Esse Dochelosa, and that's only a heter for Bia Rishona. But Bia Shnia, which doesn't have a mitzvah, does not lend itself to Dechia. So the Chachamim said it's also even Bia Rishona because the Gzera, Bia Rishona, ought to be a Shnia. Nevertheless, she needs Chalitza. Because on a Dereisa level, there's Yibu. However, this is a machlokis. Why? Because although many chacham, many tanoim hold that Kedushin Totsin Bechayvei Lavin, Rabbi Akiva on the other hand holds 
that ain't kedushin tofsin bechayve lavin. The chayve lavin have the same upgraded status as chayve krisus. Therefore, according to Rabbi Akiva, all the noshim, all the women who are prohibited with an isa lav or an isa essay, they have a din like arayos niyos, and they are pturos min achalitza umin ayivo. And yet, the Mishnah and Dafchov says that in the case of Iser Mitzvah and Iser Kedusha, they were required Halitza because Kedushin Tulsa. Whereas according to Rabbi Kiva, Kedushin Tulsa, Bechai Be'lavim. So there would not be any possibility of Yibum and therefore no possibility of Halitza. So you see that the Mishnah that requires Halitza reflects the sheet of the Chachamim against Rabbi Akiva. And that proves that not the way you wanted to say it, Rebbe, to your Talmud lady, but rather that, that but rather Hence, the Mishnah requires Chalitza, where it's a point of Rabbi Akiva, it would be no requirement. And then, so let's make a note that we got up to the bottom here of Daftes of an Aleph. And we're up to Bipirkin Ka Amrina. Okay, then, so I wish you a great, a great day. Can I see your recording? Yes, sure, please. Help me with this.